Things that God does to help them to experience it, you know, physically, emotionally, verbally, you know, uh, all the ways in which they were able to do that. So, so repentance, the forgiveness, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's another thing about the spirit of the church. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off whom the Lord your God will call. As, as a church, we want God to be calling people into the, the, his church. And again, he, I will build my church. We want God to be doing that. It is an incredible promise. And for us, it's one where we rest on the promises of God that he will take care of not only of us, but also those that are coming along that he shall call. And with many, now this is, seems like the preaching part of it. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. I think the spirit of the church is also this. It's important for us to understand that the generation in Peter's day, according to Peter, according to, you know, it was Herod's society and the like, not unlike our society today, we live in a corrupt generation. You know what was before us? was a corrupt generation. And before that was a corrupt generation. After us, a corrupt generation. We are called out. In that, while we live in the world, we don't take part in the world. We are called to be lights to the world, the salt of the earth. We are not called to be condemning. We are called to be a light and allow God to work in in their lives. As when we're asked, the hope, the gospel, we share share the gospel with them. So, but he's pleading with them to, to uh, not be a part of the corrupt generation. Those who accepted the message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Now I want to make a point here. On that particular day, you know, imagine 3,000 people gathered out here today and want to be baptized. Just come in and, and say, we would like to be baptized. Um, it would be a miraculous thing. And you think, that's way back then. So I want to ask you a question. How many people do you think around the world today, today, Saturday, June 8th, who will be baptized into the Christian church. I'm going to suggest there are more than 3,000. We don't have eyes to see what God is doing sometimes. And you say, well, how many is baptized in our congregation? No. How many has, was Jesus, God, called and were or being baptized, you know, on a daily basis, you know, added to, to the church? I think we need to look at it that way. And that's the spirit of the church of being thankful to God because we can look back and say that was back then, but not appreciate what God is doing for us today. Now they devoted them. And here's the other thing about the spirit of the church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. It is important in the spirit of the church that we understand that the apostles' teachings, they are primary witnesses to Jesus and what Jesus taught. And they were there. Jesus taught everything that was necessary for them, what he wanted them to understand. And I, what I'm going to suggest, and when we're talking about the apostles' doctrines, it, it had to be radical. In that, on the day of Pentecost, it was radical to the point, you know, they're talking about them being drunk and all of these other things, but radical in terms that they were preaching to Greeks. Uh, so you got to imagine Jews hugging Greeks in one day. That's radical. Men treating their wives as equals in Christ Jesus. You, you know, in this scripture, it talks about, you know, in the latter days, the, my spirit will be poured out upon them. Your young men shall dream dreams. All of these things. And this is, this is uh, where we are, even as a denomination, we're a ministry of all believers. Um, 
though there were apostles and, and all of that, but we are a ministry and we have the opportunity, each one of us, to preach the gospel in, in the, the true spirit in which Christ wants us to preach that. But there are four things that were done in the early church. One is they listened to the doctrines of the apostles as they were taught by Jesus. And I would say that these things that Jesus taught in the last days of his life, like you are my disciples, if you love one another, you are my friends, all the things, keep my commandments about the Holy Spirit coming. So the the spirit of the church is about the doctrines of the apostles, what Jesus taught. And it takes God's spirit to hear the voice of Christ in our life. It is also about fellowship. The spirit of church is about fellowship. It is very, very important that we fellowship with one another and fellow Christians, but not at the isolation of other individuals because we can spread a great fellowship among other people in the way in which we deal with them, interact with them as Christ would interact with them. The other thing is the breaking of bread. Now, that is both in food, they were doing that, but also in communion. And as Jesus says, as often as you do this, you do this in my name, remember me. And then the fourth thing that they were doing is prayer. So we find four things in the, in the church, in the spirit of the church. One is to follow the, the doctrines and teachings of the apostles as they follow Christ, in the breaking of bread, in prayer, and in fellowship. And everyone was filled with awe. This is the other thing about the spirit of the church. It is, it is awesome. So we, here's what we have to know. By the giving of the Holy Spirit, God the Father has put you into the body of Christ. He, has, he is the one who has put you into the church. It is the spirit that makes all the difference in the world. And as many as have the spirit of God, they are sons of God. So this is, you know, who are you and where are you? This is awesome. And it says, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles to encourage them. Now, I'm going to suggest to to all of us in terms of the spirit of the church is that as we have the spirit of God, we are going to see awesome things that God is doing in our lives and the lives of other individuals day in and day out. Whether it be the example of a young girl finding a place to live and you say, thank you, Lord, for that, or it be this. Um, And as believers, we believe that God is very active in our life. As believers, even in terms of faith, when God doesn't answer our prayer in the way that we think that he, we would like for him to do, we have to know and believe he knows about timing. He knows how he's working things out. Um, My wife and I were just talking about that the other day, about, well, if this had happened, the timing, but as a result, here's this wonderful thing that has happened in, in our lives. So I believe there are many signs and wonders done on a daily basis in our lives. All the believers were together and everything was in common. So this is the other thing that is the spirit of the church. None of us lives on our own. And we oftentimes what we hear from young people is that this is my life. I can do with it as I want. No, you can't. Uh, There's a common connection. It's kind of like the foot can't just take off by itself, you know, or the eye. And it becomes a problem because I got two eyes that are perfectly good. I'm not winking at you, Jeanette. And this one's good, but they don't work together. Each one wants to be independent and see its own thing. Therefore, there are two Carols sitting over there and there's two Jeanettes and there are two Charles, both the Charles. There are two Georges here. Yeah, see, I'm in trouble already because yeah, my eyes got me in. You know, it wasn't, it won't be the first time that your eyes get you in trouble. You know, it just scared me. I, I, well, you should have seen how scared Jeanette got, George, when I said there's two Georges. So they go, oh, no, what am I going to do? I can barely handle the one. Anyway, I'm just getting off way too far. Now, let me put, put my glasses back on to see where I should have been. 
in common. They sold their possessions good. They gave everyone as they had need. <laughs> Not as they wanted, but as they had need. You, you share. And there's, that's something about the church, you know, the spirit of the church. I mean, responsibility, people can be looked upon. Oh, Paul, Paul would have really, boy, can you imagine the Twitter feed on Paul when Paul said, if you don't work, you don't eat. It would be an uproar. But anyway, they sold every need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread. This is like going to church. They broke bread in their homes and ate together and were glad. And this is the other thing about the spirit of a church. It is the sharing. It is about a gladness. It is about a joy that comes in the church. And the result was praising God and enjoying the favor of people. And the Lord added to their da number daily those who are being saved. This is when we look at the, the joy, the spirit of the church, it is one about communion. It is one about God leading us, directing us, living in his will, having a life that truly is joyous, the one that has hope, and the one that helps us to recognize that we have life. And to, look, you know, looking out for each other and that we have a connection, we're all connected in the body and we're connected with Christ. And it is the bread and wine that helps us to understand that connection. It is his body that is broken for us. Our God, who is our high priest, who sits on his throne, and we can come to him in our time of need. It is our Lord and Savior Jesus, who bled for us, who gave his blood, cleanses us from all sins, and we have reconciliation, we have redemption, we have a connection to God. And then we are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And as brothers and sisters to, today in Christ Jesus, let us come forward. Let's take of the bread, the broken body of Christ. We do that in remembrance of him. Let's take of, of the, the wine, which helps us to recognize that all of our sins are forgiven and we can move forward. And so at this time, I'm going to um, remove this and we'll ask the well, we'll ask the blessing after you come forward and, and take that. So if you don't come forward, we'll do communion at this time and enjoy the spirit of friendship, fellowship, rejoicing, and praising God. So if you'll come forward, we'll do that. So you can just pass around behind me and get the bread and wine and, and, and come back around in front because I want to see you. And I think I'm going to ask Karen to do the blessing on the bread and Jeanette to do the blessing on the wine, if you'll do that. No, no, you go right ahead. I'm going to go, I'm going to get my... that I have more sins than everybody else. And the like. All right. We come before you now, dear Lord Jesus, and we just thank you and praise you for your willingness to come to earth, to become one of us, and to show us such love and grace and kindness and generosity, giving up your life, allowing your body to be broken, allowing you who are perfect to be beaten and abused in so many ways by mankind. And it is with this broken body, symbolized by this broken bread, that we now honor you. We recognize what you've done for us, and we just praise and thank you that you have died for us 
and that we can be healed through this bread. And we commit it all to you now, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We have a circle. Our communion kind of like around. Nice circle here, Jeanette. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you're ready, Jeanette, I'm not. Great God, Holy Spirit, and my Lord Jesus Christ, we come before your throne thankful for your generosity that surpasses anything we could understand that your blood was, was, was spilled all over the place. It wasn't just spilled at the cross. It was spilled where you were beaten. It was spilled as you drug your part of the cross to the place where it was going to be placed. It was spilled as you were lifted up, and it was spilled as they jabbed into your side. Your blood was spilled that we might have a way to the tree of life. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, as this wine represents that spilled blood, we give you praise and we give you thanks. We thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'm, we're going to conclude with this, but I'm just going to say, brethren, thank you so much for being spirit-filled, people who love Christ, who make up part of the body. Now, don't try to figure out exactly what part you are because we may get surprised. We may be a no- nose or an ear or whatever. So uh, yeah. Why did you go there, Jeanette? I got problems there. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you very much. And may you just have an incredible wonderful life as you continue in communion with our Lord. To his praise and honor. Amen. Have a great day. Blessed day. The world today is a challenging environment for Christian believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Looking for answers? Grace Communion International local churches in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto offers a comforting environment for Christians in search of spiritual growth and development. Contact a local ministry. Attend a local GCI churches at the times listed on your screen.